Hello everyone, this is my 1969 Subaru 360 that I've been converting to EFI um, with the help of the Mega Squirt MS2 computer that I had to build. And let me tell you something guys, if you ever decide to do any kind of project with a Mega Squirt, um, spend the extra hundred, uh, or I think it might have been $200 to get it pre-assembled. It took me eight hours to build that thing. That's no fun. Anyway, <clears throat> Mega Squirt's in. Um, I have a lot of work to do. I'm really trying to get this done for the shows at the end of May, towards the end of May. Um, there's so many shows and gatherings that I'd like to be involved in, and I really can't if the car is torn apart. So, anyway, I'm kind of rushing through this. There, it's, it's not complete yet. I have a lot of work to do. You can see the wiring harness is still quite a rat's nest, but all these wires are hanging down except for the ones that are wrapped up or actually connected where they need to be. I just need to loom it all up nice, but there's a few more things I have to do. Um, here we have our R6 throttle bodies replacing the original carburetor, the original Hitachi carburetor. Um, I have a uh, fuel pump here. I don't remember the manufacturer. Um, uh, I don't want to get into details. I'll, I'll write it all up, but i got to clean up a lot of stuff. You can see this fuse block. I have things twisted on. It's just a mess. Um, but you can see the, the most obvious things are the carburetor is gone and the um, distributor is gone. Um, we got that really nice plug I got from Garm over at Microimage Online. Um, they're usually used in the timing hole, um, but I stuffed this one in the distributor hole there just to plug that to keep the grease from coming out and things are getting in, uh, damaging the worm drive for the oil pump. So it looks really good there. Um, you can see the distributor's gone. All that's left is a timing wheel and that Hall Effect sensor. A couple relays on the side over here. Uh, all the good stuff is here. Um, I still have to hook up my MAP sensor and O2 sensors missing, IAC temperature and all that stuff. IAT is missing and CLT. A lot of things to do. But anyway, the main thing is it runs right now. Uh, not very well, but uh, that's because it doesn't have any outside influence on the mixture and timing. But it, it is gimping and it is running, so let's check it out. Uh, I'd have to say this is probably the first fuel-injected Subaru 360 in the world. Now, I say that proudly, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot because there really aren't that many Subaru 360s out there. Uh, here's my laptop computer hooked up with a USB uh, serial adapter. Um, I'll turn the key and I should wake up the fuel pump and the computer. Okay, she's up and running, We're ready to go. <clears throat> Turn the key and see if she'll start. All right, right now it's idling about 1,000 RPM. I probably should pump that up a little bit. One of the things that plagued these, let's see here. I'm running R6 throttle bodies from a first generation uh, bike and they had a lot of forum write-ups about the throttle position sensor wandering. Um, I don't know if this bouncing here is because of the uh, shaking of the engine, but it really shouldn't be that sensitive to it. Oh, it's not recovering very well. But again, like I said, there are no sensors really telling the engine it's warm or telling the computer engine's warm or anything like that. So, but I mean, hey, you know what? It's running. Very cool. Yeah, here we are. These are uh, custom velocity throttle bodies. Basically, they open the, uh, the uh, intake orifice to help compensate for velocity. It's awesome. Runs really well. You can see my oil pump linkage is working. All right, so we are on we are on track for that. I don't know why the idle is stumbling, but here's a fast idle control uh, bar. There used to be a, um, a solenoid on the rack that would uh, actuate this based on uh, outside temperature to give it a, idle, a high idle for a warm-up. Uh, I may hook this up to my uh, choke cable just to keep uh, the aesthetics inside the vehicle uh, nice and, and also uh, maintain that, that cold weather starting ability without electronics. Now, right now, you can see it didn't really change. But when the map sensor sees that difference uh, in, in pressure, it'll uh, it'll step up the idle or the mixture. You see it going up a little bit. It's trivial. I mean, whatever. She's not exactly tuned yet, so. Anyway, nothing for nothing, guys, but it's running, and it's running on uh, EFI. No more carburetors, no more points, no more distributors, no more problems. Cold weather starts. 
warm weather starts, no fuel leaks. It's going to be nice to be able to take this out. And the beautiful thing about this computer so, uh, or that I have in here now is that uh, uh, I can um, I can turn on a, let's see, where is it? Under extended, I think. There is a feature for launch control. So I can, uh, I can program in a two-step if I want. Not that it can handle that kind of stress against the back wheels, but with all this talk and all this fun with shooting flames, if I pop the two-step on and hit some ignition, or, uh, and, uh, and kick on uh, my tailpipe ignition, we should have some nice, uh, some nice fire without having to go crazy. So, flip of a switch. And it'll sound funny at shows, you know, bam, 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 all that, whatever. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber. Um, 69 Super 360, going fuel-injected, baby. It's a reality. All right, wish me luck. Hopefully I don't burn the garage down. <laughs>